Warning. This video contains flashing lights and occasionally unsettling moments. Viewer discretion is advised before proceeding. It's not loose focus. It could be anywhere. Oh no. Good evening. Welcome to a video on how to get good at Slender the 8 pages. 10 years ago, did this glorious nostalgic piece of history make its grand appearance onto the internet and scare the ever living shit out of people before having them upload their reactions to this very site. Now, 10 years to this day, we shall head back to this game of nostalgia once again and provide an insight as to how to beat it once and for all. Let's get started. Slender the 8 Pages is a survival horror game where you are tasked with collecting 8 pages scattered across a forest that's about the size of the average Minecraft world since it's so easy to get fucking lost in here. The controls are very basic and easy to grasp and can be found within a text document but here's a brief summary of them shown on screen right now. Outside of the controls and instructions, there are two key factors to keep in mind whilst playing. Firstly, is that the flashlight has a limited battery life of approximately 15 minutes before dying out, with it becoming dimmer as it reaches the end of its life. Because of this, you should turn it off when it is not needed and conserve its longevity for when it is actually needed in critical situations. The other thing to keep in mind is Slender himself, specifically if you fanny ass about with your finger up your ass and don't collect a single fucking page within approximately 5 minutes of starting, then the Slender man will be tired of waiting for your dumb ass and start stalking you as indicated by the starting of the following music. This will occur for every 5 minutes you fail to collect a page which will cause him to become more and more aggressive every time. This also happens with every page you collect so you will have to keep high on your heels. However, in the worst case scenario if you manage to reach 7 pages and can't find the last one within 5 minutes, you will end up activating max aggression where the music will cut out and the slender man will outright be sprinting for you when you're not looking at him. So you best hope you're near that last page or you're absolutely fucking history because his aggression does not go down to how many pages you have if it exceeds it so you will have to play catch up in an already mostly one-sided scenario. Your general visibility will also decrease as you collect more and more pages which can disorientate you and potentially lead you off the path, so do keep these in mind. Also, when looking at the Slender Man, static will begin to take over your screen with how fast being dependent on how close Slender is to you. If you look at him for too long, he will catch you and you will die. Now, armed with this knowledge, you are now ready to explore the forest and its many strange landmarks. It is strongly advised that you remain as calm as possible, as so that you do not deviate from the path that the community suggests you take, according to this image shown on screen. This image serves both as a map reference to where you are as well as which landmarks that you should visit first as well as which you should visit last. There are 10 of these landmarks in total scattered across the map though there are only 8 pages to collect so there will always be 2 areas that will leave you empty handed. Now to specific in game mechanics and scenarios for this segment I shall hand over to my good friend Tank Clips, a long time semi professional slender player who shall go over these various mechanics as well as procedures for these critical in game scenarios. Like stated there are multiple landmarks around the slender map. One of these key landmarks is the big building that lies within the center next to the oil tankers. It is also known for being quite dangerous as one of the last places to check due to how aggressive Slender is and the chances of being caught within the dead ends while searching for the page that might be within. The building is considered the best place to go to first as Slender doesn't immediately spawn with zero pages and leaves you with no risk of being trapped within the dead end hallways. This also of course leaves you with no risk of this happening to you. Oh god don't be there, don't be there, oh thank fuck, thank fuck. Oh yeah, no, no, fuck! Of course, like most stamina horror games, keeping manage is very important for survival, as running out of stamina will leave you with no means to sprint and will most likely leave you to get caught depending on how many pages you have. When given a jump scare by the Slender Man, 
For a short time, you will gain a sprint speed increase. While this is very useful for escaping, it also joins your stamina at a much quicker rate as well as lowering your maximum stamina which can be very punishing later on if it is managed very poorly. Do keep in mind however that normal sprint does not have the same effect which does make it more safer to use on the lower pages. Your stamina will recharge at a slow rate over time when it is not in use. It does also recharge at a faster rate if the player is stood completely still. It however does not recharge for a few seconds once emptied. Now like stated before, looking at Slender for too long will end up getting you killed. However, keeping him in your sight does prevent him from moving. This can be used to create a small amount of distance if managed right. It is also important to check behind you to know if the Slender is close and you need to sprint away. Another big thing is the old rumour that it was if you look behind you on 6 pages Slender will always be behind you and will kill you no matter what. Is false. The only way this happens is of course if Slender catches you or you walk back into him resulting of course him catching you. Now as said looking at Slender for too long will end up draining your sanity to zero killing the player. However, the rate at which your sanity lowers is all dependent on how close Slender is when looking at him. The further away he is, the slower your sanity drains and the longer you can look at him for and vice versa if he's closer to you. A very useful trick if you are playing on night time is to turn your flashlight off because when looking at Slender with the flashlight off, your sanity does drain noticeably much slower, giving you a much longer time to look at Slender while creating distance. Of course Slender can teleport which is the biggest thing to watch out for as he can teleport anywhere around the map to throw the player off or catch him off guard. One instant of this being the player checking behind knowing Slender's there but for one time they check behind he is teleported away leaving the player looking around trying to figure out where he's gone. A second case of this is the player checking behind to not see Slender behind them only for them to check back a second time for him to be there all suddenly. The Slender Man can teleport in front of the player and if he happens to teleport into the player's line of sight, a flash of static will happen on the screen. This will also happen if he happens to teleport as the player is also looking at him. Now as to how much Slender teleports is based on how far he is from the player. There is a radius around the player which gets smaller with each page and if Slender is out of this radius he will teleport much more often to catch up. As Slender can teleport, this makes a very common strategy, the tree technique, unreliable and dangerous to use on the later pages. As stated before, this strategy uses a tree to block your line of sight while keeping Slender within your field of view as you walk backwards to create distance. The danger to this is that if Slender leaves the radius around the player, he will teleport from behind the tree to catch up. The biggest threat is that the Slenderman can and will teleport behind the player without warning which will end up leading them into walking back into him and result in getting caught, thus making the tree technique very dangerous to use on the later pages. If you manage to successfully beat the Slenderman and collect all 8 pages, you will gain access to several different modes such as daytime where the game will take place during broad daylight or have access to different light sources like the glow sticks which do not run out of battery though they give fuck all light or a manual crank up lamp where its battery life solely depends on how much you are willing to crank the damn thing. Thanks to this guide, you can now walk through the forest with mostly confidence as you beat the urban legend in his game. A special thanks to Tank Clips for collaborating and suggesting this project to me in the first place, as well as a happy 10 year anniversary to this nostalgic piece of history. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more shit like this. Have fun.